There are over 17,500 museums within the United States, welcoming over 850 million visitors each year. Did you ever wonder what goes on behind the scenes in museums, creating the displays and exhibits we all enjoy? Join us as we explore museums and their exhibits from the inside out. Hi, I'm Leslie Mueller. Welcome to Museum Access, the show that takes you behind the scenes at America's top museums. Today, we're at a special exhibition that is traveling around North America called Leonardo da Vinci Machines, on loan from the Da Vinci Museum in Florence, Italy. This hands-on exhibition includes over 60 models of da Vinci's inventions, many of which we use versions of in our everyday lives. Leonardo da Vinci was a tall, handsome, gregarious man with an unquenchable curiosity and an incredibly inventive imagination. The term Renaissance man refers to a person with knowledge and skills in multiple areas. Leonardo da Vinci defined the Renaissance man. He was one of the greatest painters of the Italian Renaissance, yet he left only a handful of completed paintings at his death, including the Mona Lisa, the Last Supper, and the Vitruvian Man. But da Vinci was as importantly an inventor, filling thousands of pages with his ingenious designs throughout his life. Today, we'll get a behind the scenes look at the workshop in Florence, Italy, where the models were handcrafted by skilled artisans who followed da Vinci's original drawings. We'll see many of the models that were the inspiration for our modern vehicles, military equipment, aviation, nautical, and hydraulic systems. So let's step back in time to the 15th century to explore the creative genius of Leonardo da Vinci. Mark, I want to thank you so oh, much for taking the time I'm today. So to Ciao, you. how are you? <laughs> right. Now, I see we're in front of the Vitruvian Man. I know he was very important in Leonardo's career for many reasons. Tell me. Leonardo da Vinci had 44,000 drawings of all of his inventions, wow. of which only 14,000 survived. But out of all of his drawings, all of his designs, do you know what he thought the greatest design was in the universe? What would that be? Us, you and me. Oh, wow. And, and he wanted to design the perfect human. And this was his tribute to the greatest human being. The, 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 he, he did hundreds and hundreds of measurements and on all the measurements that we use today of our fingers for the inch and the yard and, the, and how high you are all comes from the Vitruvian Man. So the classic beauty would have stemmed from his drawings. Absolutely, from the, from the Vitruvian Man. But the most interesting part about Leonardo da Vinci is his best friend died in an early age mm -hmm. and he wanted to find out why his best friend passed through his early life. And you can guess what he did. Guess did he, he cut did. him up? Absolutely, he, he did. He performed an autopsy on his own best friend. The first autopsy? Well, no. he did many, oh. he did many, many autopsies. In fact, that's toward the end of his life where he was asked, actually last to use uh, to leave Europe, to, to, to leave uh, for, um, Italy and then return to France where he, where he spent the last years of his life because he was performing autopsies. And he, got, he wanted to find out how the human body worked. But also, again, Michelangelo also did a lot of autopsies, too. Well, but, so what did he find out when he did the autopsy on his good friend? Well, he, he, he called up his best friend. He found his best friend's heart. He found all the arteries 550 <laughs> years ago going to his best friend's hard work. Guess what? What? Cl clogged. They no. were clogged, yes. And he theorized what his friend had eaten had, in fact, killed him. They had junk food back then? <laughs> <laughs> I guess. Yeah, they right. did. And he, and, really? he, and he became a strict vegetarian after that. Honestly? He lived to be 67 years of age. That's pretty old. Which, for, uh, yeah. The average life expectancy at the time was only 42 to 45 at the long end. So the greatest genius of all time, and also Michelangelo, one of the greatest geniuses of all time, are still speaking to us today. And they uh, to, to eat healthy and watch what we eat and, 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 and to protect the most perfect design in the universe. Absolutely. Which is the human body. Now the drawings that he made from these studies, these autopsies, I keep hearing the word codices. What is that? Oh great, that's a great, uh, uh, codices basically is a large book of the day. Oh, okay. When da Vinci died, they put all these huge drawings he had in these huge things called codices. Uh, and they were all bound together with rope. Guess what codice means? Rope. Okay. Predecessing all, all right. of our modern day books today. So that's where the word actual code is from. And, and there's actually um, there's actually five or six of his major codices that are still you know still around the world today, and that and wow. uh, and, uh, and they're highly sought after. Oh, as you I can imagine. Bet. But the uh, but his his 
drawings the that detail. he did yeah. of the anatomical studies or the predecessing of all of our modern day medical drawings that we use today. The Da Vinci Museum in Florence, Italy houses many of Leonardo da Vinci's countless models. At the workshop in Florence, skilled artisans followed his original meticulously drawn illustrations. Using tools and techniques from the Renaissance period, they handcrafted the beautiful models on view in this very special exhibition. So Mark, what are we looking at here? Well, all the artisans of the day, including Leonardo da Vinci, they were all hired by the different dukes and lords of kings to design military weapons, both offensive and defensive. Is this where the Duke of Milan came into oh, play Oh, absolutely. Here? That okay. was the longest benefactor of his life. Yeah. Exactly right. <laughs> he, had, he worked for the Duke for over 20 years. He was the wow. longest benefactor of his life. But he was not a war enthusiast, was he? Well, they all were. Uh, back okay. then, in fact, even da Vinci, later on in his life, he wrote down that he kept coming back to these different dukes and lords of kings with these new ideas to help the common man. And he actually kind of got a little disappointed, and he said that all they wanted was war machines. That's all he well, said that they yeah, wanted. That's a... And uh, but all of it, but the, how Da Vinci kind of put his little twist on it is most of his machines not only had military but also had civilian applications to them. Interesting. And just like this paddle boat here, uh, this paddle boat here had um, that, that we know today that he was actually using the man power, as you can tell in the boat, to actually to mimic our internal combustion engines and our electric motors of today that, oh, we, that, sure. we, that we that we use today with the, with, with the man power. So how does this work? Does the man sit here, no, or is he was, standing he would and stand, doing it? He would stand there, and he would hold on to the bars. And here, you can actually move it. Go right ahead. Uh, you, by you, the paddle, you, you, yeah, or by the yeah. way, yeah. Oh my God! Well, you I gotta move it by the paddle. We don't stand on ceremony, Ron. Yeah, too much. <laughs> it even sounds old. It right? is an it is an interactive exhibit. So this one, wow. so it's it's very fun and interesting that 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 all these designs. They say there are 2,500. Think about this a minute. They say there are 2,500 of Da Vinci's designs, inventions, and theories that we use every day in our modern oh day life. Oh my gosh, wow. Yeah, his applications go on and on and on and on. Well, this this is wonderful, and I know this is one of the military applications. Oh and my goodness. And tell me yes. about this double hull. Oh, absolutely. He had, uh, um, the boats at the time were constantly being rammed. Uh, from, uh, from opposing warships. Do you and mean another ship would ram it absolutely and smash it? it. Absolutely. Yeah. And he designed the original double hull boat that he for the, uh, just for that reason. That it would not sink in the, on, the, on the high sea of battle. Well, so was the idea it would crash through the first hull no. and it could not get to the second one? Right. Or it would also, um, if there was any uh, uh, seepage, the water would seep in slower and then the, and the actual soldiers could get off the boat and get onto another boat. Now, would fishermen have any application for that too? Well, I mean, they're not getting rammed, but well, I mean, it no, would make it's, it stronger. it's funny. You mentioned it, it's every boat today that we have. Everyone has a double hull boat based upon Leonardo da Vinci's design. Wow, 500 years later. 500 years later. Now, I'm assuming this isn't a military <laughs> machine, is it? Oh, absolutely not. It's gorgeous, though. Oh, it is gorgeous. This is the actually the only one of its kind in the world. <laughs> About 10 years ago, in Da Vinci's codices, they found this, this drawing, this description of this water organ. Da Vinci would walk through villages and towns on Florence, Milan, and Rome. As he went through the center marketplaces of town, he would hear droplets of water bounce off the fountains and the stones. And that seemed to make a musical symphony to him. Oh. And he wanted to create a water organ uh, that, uh, that, that, that played by water, just like a fountain would, that you could, that you could also control. And it's very interesting, it's so cool. And what happens is, the uh, actually his design and his theory was that the water would be pumped up here to the holding tank up on top. Up here. And it actually takes two players to play this. And they would actually, the players would stand behind and they would press down on the keys. And as they press down on the keys, the water slowly fills up the cylinder. Down here. Yes. So the water comes down. Yeah, fills up the cylinder. And then the paddle comes over and knocks it and, 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 and strikes it and makes a musical note. Oh. How cool is that? Well, so each of these represents a different note? Absolutely. It's and just you could play a recognizable. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. And it, it actually doesn't play like a piano. They call it the Da Vinci water organ, and it is. It definitely plays like an organ. Yes. And it's kind of a dirge sound to it. It's kind of neat. It kind of like, it's kind of a kind of a like spooky, kind of like a kind of like eerie sound. Yeah, I it's sacred, think. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. That's the one. And it kind of plays like a kind of woom, woom, but it's very cool. That's it's very great. Cool. No, I love the look of it. Yeah. It's almost like a piece of sculpture. Oh, it is. It's really and, pretty. Um, the, uh, it, was, it was made by this Novus Corporation, and then they donated it to us about three years ago. How nice. And then you know what I get to do now? What? I get to haul it around get the rest clean of my it? life. Yeah. I get to haul it around the rest of my life with me. <laughs> That's so, right. You and the water organ. But I couldn't be any, we couldn't be any more honored to be associated with it and have this, and truly, this is the only one of its kind in the world. Wonderful. Mark, you have to tell me what this is. It's so cool. Well, this is Da Vinci's probably his most famous aerodynamic design. Okay. He called it his air screw. It An is air a screw. Air screw, okay. yes. Okay. It's a predecessor of modern day helicopters, you know, today. You've seen this design, I'm sure. Most people have seen the design in cartoons and in commercials. Yeah. But most people don't know how he actually intended it to operate. How Da Vinci actually intended it to operate is that the men would actually stand on this platform and hold on to these bars. <laughs> what do you see this? And literally run around in a circle in an attempt oh. to air screw up into the air like our present day helicopter. Oh my gosh. Now let me so ask they'd you a be question. running, running, running. Running, right. You sure it's not like exercise equipment? Oh, it could be. <laughs> he actually did that too. Exactly right. <laughs> but let me ask you a question. Did this thing work? Well, of course well, it, it seems work. like it. Oh. Well, of course it worked. I mean, it was too heavy. The so men, the guys gave up. Yeah, yeah. the men were, would wear out. Yeah. But the idea was he was using manpower and air as an element to achieve and perform this function. Now, Da Vinci had absolutely no way of knowing this, but you can tell how he set the manpower in this device that somehow in his mind he was trying to mimic our internal combustion engines in our electric motors of today yeah. so that energy could be set up and sustained and sustained long enough in order to perform this function. So man was the power back yes, then, sir. but... Think about this a minute. Can you imagine for a minute if Leonardo da Vinci would have had a sustainable power source oh. where we would be today in our life? We'd Maybe. be living on the moon. Well, <laughs> we'd be sure. 500 years ahead of ourselves. Absolutely. That's exactly where we would be today. So Mark, I think I have an idea about what this might be, but Tell well, me. As much as Da Vinci wanted to fly, he wanted to go out to the sea. He knew he had to breathe in fresh air. We had to expel the old air. And he even designed something under this underwater breathing apparatus that suspiciously resembles our regulators on our scuba gear today. Oh. Now, that's a good trivia question, you know. Who designed our regulators on our scuba gear today? I can't even guess. Well, it was, uh, it was Jacques Cousteau. Oh, Jacques that Cousteau. makes sense. How about yeah. that? How cool I thought that? it was actually earlier than him, but yeah. 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 But Da Vinci, 550 years ago in his notes, he wrote that this design was truly sinister and evil. And he wrote, can you imagine, due to the very evil nature of man, somebody's gonna surely take this design and use it against someone and cause harm against someone. Wow. So unfortunately for us, he just completely abandoned the project. He just stopped working on it because he thought somebody would take his own design and then use it against someone. Mm. So then unfortunately for us, then what happened? We had to wait another five years. We had to wait, sure. For Jacques Cousteau to invent the regulator. At the turn of the 19th century, the British military wanted to create an underwater breathing apparatus. They used this exact design from Leonardo da Vinci's to create their prototype. And guess what happened the first time they used it? Please tell me it worked. It did, absolutely. <laughs> it worked. How cool is that from a 550-year-old design? Leonardo da Vinci, along with the other artisans of the day, were hired by the different dukes and lords and kings to design military weapons, both offensive and defensive. Italy was the one country they know today, but it's all these different warring factions with these different dukes and lords and kings who are trying to outdo the other one with these machines of war and these machines of destruction. However, Leonardo da Vinci, on many of his designs, had military and civilian applications to them. This, I have his portable bridge. Well, let me sub it this way. There's a lot of jobs today you don't want, and there were a lot of jobs back then you didn't want. He designed these huge logs to be carried by horses and oxen and men. My <laughs> goodness, who'd want that job? Yeah. On these long treks and journeys. When the soldiers got to this ravine or a crevice or opening that they needed to get across. Yeah. Then what do they do? Well, yeah. They would construct this bridge without using any nails, and then they would walk across the bridge. And then when the army was finished with it, guess what they do? They'd pack it up and take it with them so it wouldn't be around for the enemy to use later. So they're building it from one shore. Yes. 
Just going over it? Right. How are they going? I don't get how they're going over it. Well, they walk. They just walk right on it. They oh, they're not bringing horses and right, animals right. and all that. It's they, just by they foot. Walk across it. I see. They walk it. across it. Exactly. So it's like a mobile bridge. A portable bridge. But the neatest part of the idea was he didn't want to be around for the enemy to use at any later time. <laughs> so they would then pack it up and then take it with them. Oh. I mean, what a great idea. Ingenious. Now, I'm going to ask you something. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to build one of these in a few minutes. No, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't even good with Lego. Yeah. But we'll give it a try. We'll give it a try. Oh, okay, we'll give sounds it a try. good. Even I know what this is, Mark. <laughs> a bicycle. But I didn't really realize that Da Vinci was involved with this, too. Well, the story behind this is unbelievable. In 1966, a monk not that long ago, mm -hmm. was going through one of Da Vinci's old codices, had been gone through a thousand times before. As the monk was paging through the codices one day, he felt one of the pages in the book felt a little bit thicker than the other pages. The monk began to play with the page, he began to gently peel it apart, and this monk found in 1966 there were two pages that had been stuck together in Da Vinci's codice for the last 500 years. Do you know what was on the other page? The bicycle. Unbelievable. Leonardo da Vinci designed the original bicycle. But more important than the design of the bicycle is he designed the link chain that operated it. That was the door. That was the key. I see. As the energy is okay. being set, it changes from one gear to another gear to another gear to sustain and perform the task easily. Da Vinci's biggest problem, though, was he couldn't make the chain because casting had not evolved that far yet. So they theorized that he used rope and leather and straps and strings to perform this function. This is unbelievable. But they found in Da Vinci's own designs in his codices that there's absolutely no doubt about it that Da Vinci designed the original link chain. No doubt. They theorize now that da Vinci had enough information for the Industrial Revolution in the 1800s in his own lifetime of the 1400s, <laughs> but we had to wait 400 years, 20 generations, that we could simply make what he wrote down at the time of the Italian Renaissance. So tell me, was this bicycle usable then? Well, could that's you a turn great it? Or what I'm they did is they, they guesstimate now that uh, da Vinci designed this as a theater prop Oh. As, as to move actors across the stage very quickly. Even and, though it was stationary? Or well, was no, it no, you know, it, it would roll, but it didn't have any steering on it. <laughs> and you notice the brakes on it need a little improvement. Oh. Need a little improvement. But they said this was actually a theater prop that he, did, that he devised because he loved theater and he loved music. And he actually invented the original spotlight to help light the theater. So he wasn't even thinking about transportation at the time. Right, no, he's thinking about More like, entertainment. Uh, yeah, exactly right. Wild. Exactly right. How incredible is that? I've been eyeballing this ever since we walked in. Tell me about this. Well, this is Gorgeous. Amazing. Absolutely. Keep in mind now, Leonardo da Vinci had 44,000 drawings, which only 14,000 survived. But he didn't have all the bugs worked out of all of his inventions. He designed them, and his apprentices built them. This behind us is the da Vinci's bat wing glider. It's in the bat shape of wing glider, glider like right. a bat. Absolutely. Yeah. Look at it. Makes sense, guy. yeah. Where do you think they got the Batman symbol from? Yeah, you're uh, not kidding. The, yeah. He thought it would work where the glider pilot's head would go through the wing. The glider pilot will hold on to either side and attempt to manipulate the wing in flight. <laughs> Just moving uh, it. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, yeah, right, huh? Well, the artisans of Florence over in Italy actually have another name for this design. Can you guess what they call this design over in Italy? Besides Good death luck. trap? Good luck. Yeah. Oh, death <laughs> trap. Yeah, well, good. they actually call it the decapitator. Oh, the decapitator. Yes. Great. As soon as the thing hit the ground, what? That's great for marketing. Right? Your head came right <laughs> Your head off. came off. This is the part of the Da Vinci exhibit. I like to say that the Renaissance meets up with Saturday Night Live. Because yeah. <laughs> what do we need for this design? You know, you, know, you know what we need for this design? What? We need a few more volunteers. Yeah, exactly. Because the first four or five didn't quite fare so well. Yeah, you don't want to be that fifth one. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but he theorized, and he theorized correctly, that for man to fly, and to fly safely as we do today, that your wings had to be parallel at all times to the horizon. And he designed the original inclimator that, uh, that tells pilots and, um, and boats at the uh, sea to keep your, 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 uh, your vessel uh, parallel to the horizon. Basically, Da Vinci designed the original first onboard instrumentation, literally 500 years ahead of this time. Amazing. So what is this contraption? <laughs> uh, Leonardo da Vinci called this design his worm screw. The worm screw, screw. okay. Now, why do you think they call this a worm screw? Yeah, it has, probably has something to do with this, it right? It looks like a worm, <laughs> yeah, exactly. We're keeping it simple. Yeah, there. exactly, thank God. He designed this worm screw that we call the corkscrew gear. As the energy is being uh, created, go ahead and create the energy. Okay. The energy is being transferred from the worm screw to the gear. 
there's many different points of contact. There's muscleless friction. If one or two or three or four of the teeth broke off the wheel, it would not have shut the wheel down. It still works, but yeah. But the ingenious okay. part about the design was what? That it was truly a one-way transfer. If you actually transfer the worm screw to the gear downward, but watch, it cannot go. It backwards. locks, I see. Okay. Oh. A little trivia, where in the world do we use this design every day of our life? Oh, I hate these questions, I don't know. <laughs> we use it in cranes, we use it in elevators, oh. we use it in a rack and pinion steering, we use it in car steering columns, we use it in uh, car differentials. Also, every string musical instrument, every guitar, bass, cello, banjo, ukulele, mandolin. For tuning or for what? Is oh. the, 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 uh, the strings in tune on oh. every musical instrument. So we can thank Leonardo da Vinci for that. Again. Again. <laughs> <laughs>